This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, the work of a local PhD student may be about to change the way we exercise on an international scale. The winners of this year's Trust Power Community Awards have been selected, but the results are a closely guarded secret. And the Chinese influence on our heritage is being explained in a new documentary that's being made locally. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Rebecca Dupree. Local research into calorie burning may help change the way people exercise on an international scale. A University of Otago PhD student has developed a method for creating personalised workout recommendations based on weight and height and he's hoping some current fitness fads are reconsidered. Walking towards weight loss. This local university researcher is looking at walking and calorie burning to create individualised fitness recommendations for people of all sizes. What I'm trying to do is find a more equitable way of prescribing exercise for health and possibly weight loss for overweight and obese adults. Mabia developed the calorie cost calculator to determine how much exercise someone needs to do if they want to maintain or lose weight. People enter their details into the system to create a picture of how much movement is suitable for them. The national recommendation is 150 minutes of physical activity a week for someone about 70 kgs and 5 foot 8 in height. The calculator is aimed at giving more accurate suggestions for those who don't fit the mould. We've developed something called the calorie cost calculator, uh, which uh, prescribes a dose of walking. So back last year we put 62 people on our treadmill. We counted the calories that each person burnt during a 15 minute walk and we looked at the difference in their energy expenditure, so the number of calories that each person was expending. The PhD study just focuses on walking, although Mabia says any physical activity is good. Only half the population is active at the recommended level and New Zealand is considered the third most obese country in the world. From this research, Mabia wants to see national and international physical guidelines updated to help those suffering from weight problems. 150 minutes each week of moderate intensity activity, um, it can't stay like that. It needs to be individualised for each person so they can get the maximum benefit. Uh, particularly for the more overweight people, these current guidelines might not be safe. So if we can prescribe exercise in a safer, more effective way, it's going to be more beneficial. He also wants to see wearable activity monitors become more accurate and used in a wider setting to help people trying to track calorie burning. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Random drug testing is on the rise at the Otago Corrections Facility, but the percentage of positive results remains small. The Department of Corrections has provided 39 Dunedin News with data spanning the last five financial years under the Official Information Act. It shows there's generally been more random drug testing per year over that time. More than 200 samples were taken in each of the last two financial years. The most positive results were in the 2013 to 2014 year when five inmates were found to have been using drugs. But that only amounted to 2.3% of tests for that period. In the last financial year, just one test was positive. Almost 50 community groups and organisations are being recognised for their contributions to the city. Judging has just taken place for the Local Trust Power Awards, with the results strictly under wraps. And despite a tough marking criteria, judges have made their decision in record time. Flicking through a folder full of nominees. Mayor Dave Cull is one of several judges in the latest Dunedin round of the Trust Power Community Awards. He's had the hard task of selecting from a pool of almost 50 nominated groups, but having done it before, he knows how to whittle them down. Trust Power are really good. They've got a series of criteria, um, you know, use of volunteers, uh, effectiveness, impact on the community, that sort of thing. And you can start judging on that basis without having to compare the different kinds of activities that the community, the community groups are involved in. Awards are dished out across several categories, including health and well-being, alongside sport and leisure. 
This year's nominations are a mix of well-known groups like Rape Crisis Dunedin, as well as more niche ones like the Tyree Dramatic Society. Certainly the, the similar groups, or the same groups often, come through, and that just uh, is an illustration, I guess, of the fact that these groups are continuing to contribute in the community, continuing to do things, continuing to fundraise, and continuing to, to reinvest in the community. The awards are run in 24 locations around New Zealand, recognising the contributions that volunteers and organisations make in different communities. Locally, there's 48 nominations this year, including Food Share and Orokanui Eco Sanctuary. For Cull, judging is a way to keep up with what's going on around town. The benefit is you learn so much about what a range of community groups are contributing in the community, and you learn, I mean, it might be everything from looking after abused kids to building uh, a heritage railway. That's the, it's, it's pretty much everything. Cull isn't spilling the beans on who's been selected as the local winner just yet. That'll be announced on the 27th of April, far ahead of the national final early next year. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. The Southern District Health Board is hoping it's contained the presence of antibiotic-resistant bacteria in patients. Five recently admitted patients were found to have intestinal bacteria that's resistant to antibiotics. It's the first time the SDHB has had to deal with a problem which is becoming more common around the world. The affected people were treated in isolation and those who'd come into close contact with them were tested. Staff say no more cases have been identified and clinical areas have been thoroughly cleaned. They say it's safe for the public to visit the hospital. Resistant bacteria is a result of antibiotics being over-prescribed and used. Residents will get an answer as to why the Chinese garden exists in Dunedin as part of a local documentary. Toitu Otago Settlers Museum staff are making a film about Chinese migration to Otago gold mines in the 19th century and they're hoping to give people a better understanding of the Chinese community's role in New Zealand's heritage. Recording a piece of local history, these filmmakers are in the process of making an insightful documentary looking at Chinese migration to Otago goldfields. It's called The Journey to Lan Wan and it's seeking really to answer the question why is there a Chinese garden in Dunedin? You know, what does it signify? What's the Chinese heritage in Otago that it, that it symbolises and that it commemorates? So that's really what we're trying to do. To answer that question, those involved are telling the story of Chinese migration to the region through gold mining. A film crew spent last week in central Otago recording historic gold fields and will soon travel to the Hokianga as well as Victoria and Shanghai. Qingdong in China is the last stop on the tour, which is where many gold mining immigrants originated. All over the place there are remnant elements and places on the landscape, Chinaman's Gully and Wong Gong's Terrace and all these sort of things that signify how important the Chinese were to the Otago goldfields in the late 1860s in particular. Chinese have an extensive history in Dunedin since migrating as the first non-Europeans in the 1860s. Brosnahan says they were often discriminated against, but their culture and community began to flourish locally in the mid-20th century. Toitu staff are hoping to paint a picture of that for local Chinese and the wider community. This um, thread that, if you follow through history, leads all the way to those young people today living here as part of our community and really just part of the furniture. But back in the day, uh, their forebears, their predecessors, were really adding a new element to the place. The documentary has been funded by the New Zealand Chinese Association and the Otago Community Trust. It's expected to be finished around the end of the year. Annabelle Dick, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, the Dunedin Youth Council meets in the Civic Chambers and will take a look at some new measures deployed to curb unpleasant sideline behaviour. Far too much stock, Alex Campbell menswear, South Dunedin. Don't let me bore you, but it's rock bottom. Jeans, $40. Casual pants from only $20. Shorts from $30. Hundreds of them. Hundreds and hundreds of shirts at rock bottom prices. From $20. And knitwear from $50. That's rock bottom. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. It's rock bottom. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. 
Come visit the team at 553 Taipo Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. For professional, reliable and approachable service where your dream kitchen design can become an affordable reality, contact the team at Kitchens for Less. Call 455-9973 or visit us online. Mobility Scooters of Targo. Mobility Scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs, visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 117766. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free. It's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. Almost 300 houses were sold in the city last month, further boosting the property market. That equates to an increase of 33% compared to last March. The average price for local homes being sold sits around $305,000. It was slightly higher in February, but values are up 9% on a year ago. Sales are also rising in other parts of Otago, where the median settling, settling price has jumped about $20,000. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 has closed the day up one whole point. It's now at 6,726. The Nikkei is up 170 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is down very slightly against the Australian, but we are up against the other currencies we follow. Members of the Dunedin Youth Council have just held a model meeting in the Civic Chambers. The council was appointed last August and since then mem members have been involved in a range of initiatives. And youth Councillor Christina Weston is here to tell us more. Good evening. Hello. How did yesterday's meeting go? Um, it went really well. It was really good. We learnt a lot more about how like, the council works. And it was really interesting putting our input into the, just the city. What were you hoping to get out of it? Um, I think I was personally hoping to get out of it just learning more about how the city actually runs by the people who are running it. Yeah. What projects have the Youth Council completed to date? Well so far we've had a logo competition and we've got the logo here. Also we, ha we did ice creams at Creek Fest and we held a refugee support meeting. Mm. What else are you working on at the moment? Um, in the library, we're working on a wall for the teen space, so we're putting the Dunedin Youth Council's imprint on the wall in the teen space. And also, we are working on Youth Week, which is coming up in May. Mm -hmm. What's involved in Youth Week? Well, we've got a lot of different things coming on. The main thing that we're actually going to focus on, though, is youth vote, because under-18s don't get to vote, so we'll be coming up with something that the youth can vote on. Mm. Are you working with other youth councils throughout the country? Um, in April, we're actually going up to, in Christchurch, a whole, like, 
a big <laughs> meeting full of them because we haven't worked with any of the other ones, but we're just going to learn how they run and then we will work with them, mm. I think. Has being on this council helped you in any other areas of your life? It's really, it's helped me with leadership and just really understand what's actually going on, yeah. What advice would you give to any of you thinking about joining the council? Go for it. It's so much fun. You get so much out of it. And I think you really grow as a person and the friends you make, it, it's just it's an amazing experience. How many of there are you? Um, there's 14, but yeah, there's, we had 14 and then we, we've had a couple of people leave. So we're just currently trying to get some people from St Hilda's and KVC. And then at the end of the year, we've got about five people leaving. So. How much of your time does it take up? Um, with Youth Week coming up, it will take up quite a lot of time, but um, just recently we've been just deciding what our purpose is and what we really want to, how we want to represent the youth and what we want to do. Well, very good luck with, uh, with the future of the Dunedin Youth Council. Councillor Christina Wesson, thanks very much for your time. Thank you. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, poor sideline behaviour is about to be kicked into touch and tourism operators prepare for an even bigger cruise ship season as the current season ends. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. Works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new all black pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. Ecro Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs, visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 117766. Mobility scooters are targets. Mobility scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax woodware and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit www.beeswax.co.nz. Ready Lawn has the perfect solution for all those lawn woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 486 1819. Too much stock, Alex Campbell means we're South Dunedin. Don't let me bore you, but it's rock bottom. Jeans, $40. Casual pants from only $20. Shorts from $30. Hundreds of them. Hundreds and hundreds of shirts at rock bottom prices. From $20. And knitwear from $50. That's rock bottom. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. It's rock bottom. generally not a job that we can't get a door out and in in a day. It's important to, to make sure you get a good design because you're going to be in it for the rest of your life. There's no schemes that are wrong when it's a personal choice thing, but some do look better than others.
Here's something else to look forward to sinking your teeth into every weekend with the Otago Daily Times. The Weekend Mix, your guide to what's hot in fashion, entertainment, food and more. New Weekend Magazine in your ODT. Pick up your copy this Saturday. Welcome back. Three bicycles have been stolen from South Dunedin homes in the last few days. A woman's white push bike was stolen from a Richardson Roadhouse on Saturday and another bicycle theft was reported from the same street yesterday. A silver bike was also stolen from Phillips Street in Kensington over the weekend. Police are urging residents to secure their properties, with about six other recent cases of cribs being broken into. That's mostly been happening in areas between Port Chalmers and Waitati. Otago Rugby has launched a new initiative focused on controlling sideline behaviour. More than 30 large signs have been produced outlining appropriate spectator conduct for rugby clubs throughout the region. And those behind the scheme hope it will encourage a more positive environment for all involved. A guide for what's appropriate on the sidelines. Otago Rugby, in conjunction with Harcourts, is helping tackle the trend of poor spectator behaviour at rugby games. The idea was proposed last year following a number of complaints about viewers' conduct. We, we wanted to take a, a step forward and, and I suppose be proactive uh, rather than reactive and, and we, we had a couple of signs made last year and things did improve and I think to, to make everyone aware of, of what's expected on the sidelines is really important. The initiative was launched to coincide with the beginning of the Premier Club rugby season which began a few weeks ago. While the message for spectators is to watch what's said on and off the sports field, Kinley still wants people to remain vocal. The good thing is that, that parents and caregivers and friends are actually going to the games to support, so it is a positive thing. And, and a lot of parents and, and supporters probably don't even realise that some of the things they're doing aren't, aren't best practice. So I suppose it is it's better to reinforce the positives than, than I suppose go on with the big stick. Clubs throughout the rest of Otago will receive their signs in coming weeks and there are plans to produce more for high schools. It's the local union's way of working alongside a national campaign being run by New Zealand Rugby. What it is is, is schools and clubs register and they'll um, receive some free resources to, to promote sideline behaviour, um, positive reinforcement. We've, we've both, I suppose this is a precursor or it's the union step and look, we're, we're apt to be able to have the opportunity to get these signs made up in partnership with Harcourts obviously and get them out around the region. It's week four of the Premier Club rugby season and so far Kenley says there have been no reports of poor sideline behaviour. He's hoping that continues and the signs end up having a lasting effect. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Pupils at a dozen local schools are participating in a national literacy project aimed at getting them to write real letters. The initiative is being sponsored by Warehouse Stationery, which is providing about 70,000 stamped postcards. They'll be distributed to schools around the country, allowing students to write and send correspondence like the olden days. It's hoped the project will boost literacy and writing techniques in today's digital world. About 50,000 postcards are also being made available to parents to encourage their involvement. The cruise industry is continuing to grow with more ships expected to dock in Dunedin next season. The October to April season has just ended and visitor industry staff are preparing for another influx of passengers and crew. It's anticipated that a record 96 cruise ships will visit the city over the coming season. They're expected to bring more people than ever before with larger ships booking wharf time. As many as 8,000 extras could flood the city on the busiest days. In previous years, Dunedin has welcomed around 70 or 80 ships. The growing industry is already thought to be worth more than $30 million for the city annually. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. A breakthrough device for weight loss based on personal measurements has been developed by a local physiotherapy PhD student. The Mayor has been involved in judging this year's local Trust Power Award winners, which will be announced at the end of the month. And Toy 2 staff are making a documentary about early Chinese gold miners and their impact on Dunedin as well as the rest of New Zealand. Well, it's time now to find out what's going to be in Wednesday's Otago Daily Times and Barry Stewart's with us to tell us. Good evening. Hello Rebecca. Dunedin bound refugees uh, are being offered three and four bedroom state houses. So we update the situation by talking to Red Cross today. Uh, South Otago property values have jumped a whopping 45% in a year. Yikes. So if you want to 
secure property in South Otago, get there quick. It's mm -hmm. going up. BMX rider has been banned from driving. That is banned from driving a car after an incident with a pedestrian in South Dunedin. That was uh, his sentence. Uh, Dunedin Mayor Dave Cole was involved in a, a dispute over a holiday home in Terrace, or a subdivision of a holiday home in Paris, in Terrace. Uh, University of Otago is reporting a model. You weren't look, looking at me there. <laughs> I, I wasn't listening. You caught you me weren't. out. I'm sorry. Is, uh, <laughs> so I'll start again. Re University of Otago is reporting a modest increase in the first year in, in international student numbers this year. And a fresh fashion writer, Jude Hathaway, looks at that winter fashion essential, which is? The coat? The coat. Excellent. I've got my coat sussed for winter. Really? Good. Very excited. Excellent. Bursting out a red one this year. Really? Yeah. That'll be dynamic. Watch this space, mm. Barry. The viewers won't see it. Sorry about that. That's tomorrow's ODT. It is. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. It's time now for local weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Puff Plus. And around the city today, it's 3 o'clock, 14 degrees for the central city and the gardens, 16 for the Tyree. To the situation, and an anticyclone will extend onto the country from tomorrow. Well, to the forecast for the main towns in the lower South Island for tomorrow, westerlies with some cloud for Invercargill, Gore and Tiano. A fine day awaits Alexandra with a high of 15. And fine weather awaits Queenstown, Omaru, Wanaka and Twizel, all on 15 degrees. In Dunedin tonight, fine with frosts, possible by dawn in sheltered areas. Tonight's low 3 degrees. Tomorrow and Thursday looking quite lovely with sunny periods and cool southwesters. Light frosts possible at night in sheltered areas. Going for a high of 14 tomorrow and 16 for Thursday. And to the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information. High tide tomorrow morning is at 14 to 9. Low tide follows at 23 to 4. And fishing conditions are not looking promising, so we recommend giving it a miss. We've had quite the run of bad fishing days lately. Let's uh, all hope for an improvement in the not too distant future. Well, that is local news for Tuesday. We will see you again tomorrow. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.